guys, Milesy here. I did this parking tutorial a little while ago when I was just a babby YouTuber and didn't know what I was doing and there were a lot of issues with it, so I'm going to redo it, just redo the voice track and cut it down a little bit to show you how I do my parking. And I don't do parking very often, I typically only reserve it for patterns like this that are full of confetti that make chasing the colors a lot more difficult, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do here, just how to do the parking, and this is my method of doing parking. It's not everyone's method. This method may not be the one for you, but it's the one that I find works the best for me. And if there are any concerns about copyright, you can see right there, it's my own pattern, so don't worry about that. Now when I do my parking, I like to do it in a 10 by 10 block and start in the upper left or as close to the upper left as I can, so that one right there. So we're starting with these stitches I already have highlighted pink, and I already have my needle threaded, so there's nothing that we have to deal with there. And we're just going to find that stitch, which is right there, and I always like to do a loop start whenever I start. And that's pretty simple, you just push the thread through the front, pull it up through the back, and you put the needle through the loop at the end, pull it through, and then put it back through the same hole that you just came up from. And when you do that, you've created a secure fastening that the thread won't come out and you don't have any knots that you have to deal with. And from there, you just stitch as normal. So I'm going to start on the stitch that's the closest to the upper left, which is that top one. And then I'm going to go as close to rows as possible. So we go for the one that's the next farthest down. And since there are no rows on this color, we're just going to continue going down as far as we can. Now that we've finished all of the stitching in that block, we have to go down to the next one to find where the next occurrence of this stitch is. And we're going to find the next occurrence that's the closest to that top left stitch. And we're going to find it down here, just a few rows down so we can see there's the top left, and the next closest one is a few rows down on the left. There's nothing over here on the side that's on top of it, so that's where we're going to park our next stitch. And to park the next stitch, we're just going to count down where it is. And we have to skip four rows, so we're going to move this thread out of the way so that we can count and just count down four rows. And then pull it through and take it off the needle. And now we have the thread parked for where we need it next, so we don't have to go searching for it next time. We're done with this color, so we're going to go ahead and highlight it off to make it blue. And then we have to find the next color that's the closest to that top left, which in this case is this little club right here. And we're going to continue doing the same thing. We have the needle threaded, and we are going to just put it through there, do the loop start. And since there are no other instances of this color in this block, we're only going to stitch this one and then go straight down to the next block to park it again using the same method. And we find down here that there aren't any that are close to the top. The closest that we have are down here in the corner. And when I do my parking, I typically will only do it in the next block. I might go down to the one after if it's only going to be skipping about maybe 10 or 12 stitches at the most. But I won't go and park down three or four blocks away. I'll only go into the next block or the block immediately after. And that's to save thread and to save the back from getting a little bit too tangled up. So now that we've finished that first block, we're going to go down to the next one. And when we're using new threads that haven't been parked, I start in the upper left. But since we have parked threads, we're actually going to start in the opposite, which is down in the bottom right. And the reason we start down there is because when we pull the thread up here to the left, you can see that by starting in the bottom right, there's nothing that's going to get in the way. So we pull away the bottom most right thread, and we just find on our pattern over here on the right what color that corresponds with. And we do that just by counting the blocks on the fabric, and we can see that that's the club that's right there. 
So we rethread our needle with that new thread and we just stitch from the top left down to the bottom right now, just like we did before. And just like before, now that we're done with that color, we're going to go searching through the block and see if we can find a place to park it in the next one. And we can, there's one right down here in the very bottom. So we pull the thread through and there we go, it's parked. And we continue doing this, pull the thread up to the top left and find first the bottom most and then the right most. We don't want to go from the right to the bottom because then we might wind up with thread that's in the way. So when we're going this way with thread that's already parked, start in the bottom and then look toward the right. So now we have this color here, which is marked by the dot, and we're going to do the same thing now. Starting with what is the upper leftmost color, we're going to go in rows or as close to rows as we can and fill in this color just like we did before with all of the others. Now, if you have nothing to park in the next one, you can do a few things. You can either bury the thread up in what you've stitched above it, or I didn't do it here, you can pin the stitch in the next block over. In this case, I just buried it up above and then you can cut it off as close to the fabric as you can and you are ready to go. There's nothing to park because in this case, there wasn't enough thread left to park. And now we simply start over. We mark off what we've already done and then find the lower rightmost thread on our fabric again. And we continue the same way we've been doing. And you continue like this until you've run out of parked threads and you're ready to start over where we started in the video with new threads that haven't been parked yet. And here we are, all of the threads have been parked and we still have a few little colors that haven't been done yet. And this is right where we started on the previous block. But this is my version of parking. Like I said, there are probably many others out there. You don't have to do my version. You can get ideas from it, don't take it as the only way or the best way. It's just the way that I found works best for me. And here's what the back looks like. And you can see that it's a little bit more orderly than it tends to get when you're chasing colors. There are some thick areas where there are a lot of colors, but you don't get a lot of long tails and big knots that you can get otherwise. And I was just cutting these threads here because I wasn't pinning anything. I was just kind of burying them a little bit. And eventually those long threads will get completely buried by the newer uh, stitches that are coming along. But hopefully you found this recut a little bit more helpful. I know the original version wasn't the best, but I don't have those work files anymore, so I wasn't able to just fix the sound that way. I had to completely record a new voice track. But if you found this helpful, please let me know, and if you have any questions, put them down there as well. I do read them, even if I don't have the chance to respond to them. But as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!